welcome to the quick video on EC Fan Technology. Today we're looking at how to control and diagnose an EC fan. An EC fan in refrigeration systems is very important as it controls the head pressure or the high pressure in the refrigeration system. By controlling the speed of the fan, we can keep a very stable head pressure. Stability means better control. It also means less risk of liquid floodbacks or overfeeding. It also leads to energy efficiency. So this is very important in refrigeration systems. And obviously, if we have problems with our fans, we will have problems with the refrigeration system. We use a variety of brands from Zeal, EBM, Rosenberg, or Fanstech. The wiring of them all is very similar. Not identical, but very similar. So we will show you today the wiring diagram of each fan, and we'll have a look at how that integrates with our wiring diagrams and how you might then go about operating the fan or diagnosing a fault. Let's have a look at it now, thank you. Hello, here is a classic wiring diagram from one of our products. Over here we can see this is condenser fan control. This is the control signal from the PLC. We are bringing this, in this case, into location E1. Uh, now, for reference, we haven't set it here, but on this particular product, it is actually a Zeal fan. When we come into E1, we daisy chain that same signal, that same 0 to 10 volt signal, into each fan. So each fan is getting the same speed signal from our PLC, which means all fans should ramp up and ramp down at the same time. This is important and enables maximum energy efficiency because if we run multiple fans at a slower speed due to the fan law curve, we can get a much higher energy efficiency over running one or two fans at high speed and the other fans off. Next is we have a look at um, the ground. In this case, we've called this ACV1 minus. The ground, again, is a common ground for each fan. It should be noted the PLC that is giving this 0 to 10 volt signal is also connected to the same ground. This is important if the reference ground for your 0 to 10 volt signal is not the same. It's like talking a different language. They won't understand each other. This reference must be the same. Next is, we can see here, line one. This is our fault circuit. So we are coming in to terminal 11 and coming out of terminal 14 and we are daisy chaining along all of these. If we have a look up here, we are daisy chaining across this. We can have up to 230 volts and two amps, but we are daisy chaining across our fault circuit and connecting it then to our fault light. So this is basically a simple fault circuit where we can check for power at each of these locations. One thing to note here, we can see from the 24 volt supply across to D1, D1 for the Zeal is a digital input. It is a fan enable signal. If we do not have this closed, the fan will not run. Now, Sorry, for our fans, we enable all of the fans all the time. And the speed is coming from the controller with zero volts being zero speed. We do not enable and disable fans case by case, and we do not use the controller to enable and disable fans. We have all the fans enabled all the time. If you do a fan replacement, make sure you put back This loop or the fan will not operate. Um, okay, let's have a look now. It's Zeal. Again, this is very easy. Our wiring diagram was as per Zeal. We have the line input, the earth, the fault circuit, the digital input, the reference ground. Now, we are not taking the 10 volt from the fan. We're bringing the 10 volt from our PLC to the controller. And this is a Zeal diagram. Let's have a look over here at EBM. It's a different brand of fan, 
But again, we will start to see a lot of common commonality between the brands. Here we can see the phase input and the earth. We can see our fault circuit, normally open, normally closed fault circuit, our reference ground, and our zero to 10 volt signal input. So as you can see, the control and the three phase. Almost the same, different names, maybe not calling these E1 and D1. If we come over here to another brand, this is Rosenberg fans. Again, it will start to feel very common. Phase input and earth, the normally open, normally closed fault circuit, the 24 volts looping to the digital input and Rosenberg are nice enough to call it enable here for us to make it very obvious what this digital input is doing. The reference ground, the 10 volt input, which in our case would be coming from the PLC. Just so you know, these other terminals here in some fans are used for um, Modbus signals where you could be connecting to a network. Uh, in most cases, we do not network our fans because um, we have other fault devices on our refrigeration system for this. Okay, thank you very much. This is the wiring diagrams. Now we'll have a quick look at a physical fan so that we can see what these connections look like on a physical fan. Thank you. Okay, here we have the terminal box of a classic EC fan. We'll normally find that the, uh, the power will be coming in the larger gland, which will be coming to the lines one, two, three, and the, the earth. Um, <clears throat> again, as with all motors, it's uh, extremely important to make sure that you have a good earth connection. So um, always make sure that here. On the side here where we have the, <clears throat> the inputs, these are over here normally, normally closed and common. These could be voltaged or um, low voltage. So just be careful when you're applying these connections that you don't mix them across here because you can burn out if you put 230 volts on these um, zero to 10 volt and low voltage connections. See if we zoom right in, we can see <clears throat> We have a, a 24 volt connection, a digital input, a 10 volt supply and a zero to 10 volt and a ground. When we're connecting to a PLC, we always have to make sure that the ground on here and the ground on our PLC is the same, because this is a reference. If we don't have that reference ground, the zero to 10 volt does not know what it's referencing to, and you will not get an accurate result. A lot of these fans, they're all slightly different, so we'll talk about that in a moment, but most fans will require a run signal. And most commonly that run signal will come from the voltage, which is in this case, the 24 volts across to the digital input. So depending on how you're controlling this fan, you could close a relay to engage the fan, or you could keep that permanently closed and then control the fan using zero to 10 volts only. Here on our EC fan, we can see this is a classic terminal cover. Um, they're quite a simple basic terminal cover with our IP glands coming in and then this IP rated cover. We can see there is a small lip around here and that slit is pretty much what's protecting the water from getting in there in combination with this rubber gasket that we can see underneath here. Now we don't have a lot to work with and what happened is it's quite tempting to put the cover on, get your impact driver and do it up and apply the pressure. But if you do that, you'll notice it's quite easy to get our terminal cover um, off on an angle. And even when we start to do these up, we might not get a perfect seal. So I'd highly recommend when we're doing um, sensitive covers up like this, do them up loosely at all and then slowly inch them in so that we get a nice square seal on this over banging in one and then the other with our impact drive. Hello, so today we've covered the wiring diagram classically used for these EC fans. We've had a look at the different manufacturers and what their wiring diagrams would look like and the different uh, nomenclature or naming of the terminals between the brands. We've looked at um, the power input, we've looked at the 0 to 10 volt and common ground, and we've talked about the fault circuit. Um, when it comes to troubleshooting with these fans, of course, some fans do have a little red um, fault light on them, but a lot of them these days do not. So really troubleshooting, I recommend um, troubleshooting back at the fan. Have a look if you've got the three phase coming in. Um, having a look if you've got the, the ground and the 0 to 10 volts. Um, and having a look if you're closing um, that digital input 
loop. If uh, if those are occurring and your fan's still not running, then uh, you, you do have a potential, potential that you do have a burnt out fan. Um, some of the fans do have a little red light with some flashing patterns on there. If that's the case, you can just give us a call and we can talk about those uh, flashing patterns with the specific brand. Um, but again, not all the fans have that, so we'd need to know the, uh, the model number of the fan um, to get the relevant flashing pattern um, and what that might be. But I hope this uh, short video has been informative and that you feel like you can be a little bit more confident around the operation of these um, EC variable speed fans. Once again, control from the fan, control from the PLC to the fan with the modulating speed with those basic inputs. Um, again, thank you very much. Have a great day.